the people are doing. So, boy, is it good to be back. So there's a very good reason that I haven't really been able to make a video in a while now. Actually, a couple. So first and foremost, I managed to finish off my damn degree. The nightmare is over. It took too damn long, but man, is it a relief. Secondly, your boy got LASIK. So essentially, it's actually a different version of LASIK called SmartSight. Point is that I didn't really have my proper vision up until you know, just a few days ago. It's still not perfect yet, but good enough for a video. And well, that's all I needed because I hated sitting on my ass doing nothing. It was horrible. But anyways, let us get to the meat of the matter, shall we? The re-compared. What's even the point of it? Well, essentially, this is where we are going to take a look at how far along these cameras have gotten over the course of time with software updates. That's usually something that helps a lot of cameras. Not all of them, but some of them. So here, essentially, we are going to be taking a look at where the updates have maybe made alleged fixes. I want to confirm all that stuff. But I also want to preface the fact that this is not a complete recomparison. That would be ridiculous to say the least because it would take too long and I don't really have the inclination for that. I've already done that stuff. You can check out the comparison. They're still valid, but there have been certain changes and that's exactly what we're going to take a look at here. So let's jump in after that long ass intro. So starting things off with, of course, our color profiles. Right here we have Leica Vibrant, which is giving us a lot of vibrance on the Shine Photon Ultra. Maybe a bit too much for my personal taste, but hey, two is their own. And we also have Vivid Colors on the X100 Pro. Now these are of course not my favorite, but what I want to talk about is of course Textured Mode coming up on the X100 Pro. Now this right here, this is what I prefer to use. Zeiss Natural Colors on the Vivo and Leica Authentic on the Shine Photon Ultra. You see, I'm an advocate for natural colors when it comes to any kind of photography or videography. I just prefer it. I feel like that's the way to go. It doesn't give you oversaturated and processed looking results most of the time. And by far, I think the X100 Pro has the best natural color profile I've ever used. Leica Authentic gets very, very close and I really like the high contrast that it inherently gives us. But I do think that it can maybe not be as accurate with the colors as the X100 Pro. But then of course, textured mode. Now this is the insane, punchy, high contrast shot that you can have from the X100 Pro. Now the reason I'm talking about this is because back when it launched, and I think even right now, even after various updates, I don't think textured mode is quite user-friendly on a regular basis. Because you can get very stylized, very punchy, very high contrast results, and in certain niche situations, they can be worthwhile. But you can't really use it for every single photo that you take on a regular basis, which is unfortunate. Now this right here is of course our classic backlit shot. And no, I couldn't really get any backlit by the sun shots, because there is no sun. It's just... For an entire month, I, I, I don't think I've seen the sun. <laughs> this has been the case here. So this is the best we can do. What I'm seeing is that the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's overall contrast balance seems to have improved because with Leica Authentic particularly, it used to either crush shadows or blow out highlights maybe for the sake of contrast or realistic exposure, realistic look, whatever the case, it seems to have improved on that. However, the one thing that I'm not particularly liking here is take a look at the background and take a look at what's happening with the colors in my painting right back there. The X100 Pro with Zeiss Natural Colors is maintaining the perfect level of saturation and the warmth is beautifully maintained. But on the Xiaomi Photon Ultra, that's not the case. Now obviously, if you don't like the high contrast look of the Xiaomi Photon Ultra, you can try out like a vibrant. I wouldn't really recommend it because it just it doesn't look as nice as like authentic in my personal opinion. But hey, you have the option, feel free to use it. Now let's move on to the ultra wide camera. Now this is a fairly simple shot as you can tell, but Notice the warmth, notice the white balance. It's perfect on the X100 Pro. There were very, very slight warm lights happening in the scene and you can just see the hint of that being preserved on the X100 Pro. This is basically what I'm talking about when I say that the X100 has near perfect realism and it basically reproduces the colors that you see. The color accuracy is insane. The Xiaomi gets really close once again. But the one thing that I really like about the Xiaomi is, you can probably tell, that massive, ridiculous field of view. I think it's the widest ultrawide I've used this year, and it's just, it stacks up. Now here we have our backlit ultrawide. It had to happen, right? But well, what I'm seeing is very simple. The Xiaomi Fortin Ultra, for all intents and purposes, is just pulling ahead, simply because of that just insane level of contrast 
and the balance is just perfect. You can see all the details in the shadows for the most part, at least the shadows are relevant, you know. But it is also giving us tons of contrast and it looks so much better, so much less flat as opposed to the X100 Pro. It just works out perfectly. Now credit where due, the X100 is handling the highlight coming in from the window maybe a pinch better, but that's honestly not enough for me at least. Now then for the 2X sensor crop, you see this one I took it under very particular conditions because unlike most of the other times when I've taken these kinds of photos, you know, in daylight, sunlit conditions, really bright, really ideal. That's not the case here. This is indoors and I took this in a hotel where essentially the lighting wasn't particularly good. So it's gonna be a really good test for both phones. Of course, cropping all the way in to 500%. As you can see, there's a very obvious difference here. It's very minor, like both are producing exceptional results, no question about it, but I do see more sharpness on the X100 Pro. That is both a good and a bad thing because you can also see processing, haloing, a little bits of artifacting on the X100. It's a very minor difference, of course, but it's the opposite in case of the Shine Vote and Ultra because what we have here is a much more organic look, less sharpened, less processed look, kind of professional, I guess you could say, but it also doesn't have as much, I guess, texture detail as the X100 Pro. Now, of course, let us jump over to videos. So this is where things get interesting. Now, 4K30 is exceptional on both. You don't believe me? Check out the video comparison I've done. Links in the description, as I said previously. But it is in 4K60, where the Xiaomi Fold in Ultra can sometimes falter. It is mainly, particularly, with the dynamic range, because what happens is, with the Xiaomi, you have 4K30, which has HDR mode enabled. You can enable it yourself. But with the 4K60 on the Xiaomi Fold and Ultra, you don't get any high dynamic range option. And look, truth be told, you're not gonna have any issues with the main camera particularly because the main camera's exposure balance, the way it handles dynamic range in general, is really good. You're not gonna have any issues there. Is actually with the Ultra, right, which we'll get to in a moment. But before that, of course, I had to take this separately for both phones because the subject was so small, it would have looked all weird with the parallax and everything. So right here, we have the Vivo X100 Pro. And as you can tell, the X100 inherently has lower contrast, which in a case like this, where you have a sort of backlit situation happening, it actually works in its favor. There are still some exposure shifts that are occurring and it was the same case with the Xiaomi Photon Ultra as well. So with the main camera at least, I'm not seeing any problems. But of course, it is with ultra wide 4K60 that the Xiaomi used to have a whole bunch of problems. Like the exposure would go all over the place, the shadows would be entirely crushed, the highlights would be blown out. That's kind of the situation we used to deal with. As you can probably tell, it's not really the case anymore. You can see the quality and essentially the dynamic range to highlight preservation as much as it could preserve. It's pretty much on par with the main camera, which was also on par with the X100 Pro. The X100 Pro had never had any such problems, just to be clear, or so I thought because turns out, for some reason in this particular instance, I'm noticing an issue on the X100 Pro's 4K60 Ultra Wide. This has never happened before, by the way. You can check out every single videography comparison I made with the Vivo X100 Pro, with all the other devices, not just the Shine Photon Ultra, and you would not see any major problem like this. Like the exposure is shifting a little too much. It looks unprofessional, and obviously this problem was not inherent in the Xiaomi Photon Ultra, which used to have the problem. I already checked, I did not mix up the footage. This is exactly what we have. So yeah, I'm not really sure what went wrong on the X100 Pro. Maybe I found a certain flaw here. Maybe in a situation like this, under these specific lighting conditions, it screws up. But honestly, I can't say for sure. What I can tell you is that, yeah, I don't even know what to say because <laughs> I didn't really expect downgrades. I always expected upgrades in a recompare, regardless. Let us talk about 8K. So here's the deal. 8K looks good on the Shine Photon Ultra, but as you can tell, the stabilization for the most part has gotten a little bit better. It was horrendous before, like you could not walk around with it. If you tried, it would look ludicrous and just you know shaking all over the place as if you're trying to run with it, even though you're not. Now the X100 Pro on the other hand, it has really nice 8K. I think the contrast could be a little bit better, but it has really good and um, basically as good stabilization as you could hope with 8K video. The Xiaomi, I think it's gotten a lot better. The updates have helped out. You can actually kind of walk around with 
shooting 8K video. You could not do that back when I tested it against the X100 Pro. Again, don't believe me? Check out the video, it's all there. Now, of course, we gotta tackle the biggest problem that I've ever faced on the Shai Foden Ultra, the portrait mode situation. Because, man, I just, I don't think I can explain to you guys just how bad portrait mode used to be. The reason I say used to be is because it has drastically improved. And once again, you don't believe me, by all means, check out the various photography comparisons I've done with the Shine Foden Ultra. You'll see exactly what it used to be and just how much better it has gotten. I've taken most of these shots in backlit conditions and it's it's really good. Like we have two portrait modes here, essentially. Like a portrait, which is what you're seeing here and it looks nice enough. And then we have master portrait mode, which is essentially gonna give you slightly lower contrast, a flatter look. Maybe some people find that to be better, more flattering. Personally, I prefer higher contrast, as you would expect. But I do believe that still overall, the X100 just edges it out with being a little bit better balanced and overall looking more realistic with the skin tones and the colors and so on and so forth. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the Xiaomi Ford and Ultra, it used to be unusable in terms of portrait modes. Very inconsistent, and that's just not the case anymore. Similar story here, this is, I believe, 35 millimeters for both phones, and look, I like how the X100 Pro looks. It's very nice. But I also like how the Xiaomi Ford and Ultra looks. Very nice once again. And yes, I know the angle isn't exactly perfect. I, I, I should have noticed that earlier, but regardless. The point is that we are getting good portrait mode out of the Shine Foden Ultra. That is unheard of. Once again, switching to master portrait mode and it looks good. May not look as stylish with the whole swirling Zeiss bouquet that we have on the X100 Pro, which I personally like a lot, of course. But, you know, I don't mind using the Shine Foden Ultra anymore because it can produce good results. Now, of course, in this particular case with the 2x or 50 millimeters, I think the backlit situation may have gotten a little drastic. As you can tell, the X100 Pro being as flawless as it is, it produces perfect results no matter the lighting condition, which is quite the compliment, but it deserves it. Let's face it, just look at the difference. The Xiaomi is definitely struggling, but it's not nearly as bad as it used to be once again. Like, in a situation like this, it used to be much worse on the Xiaomi Ford and Ultra. And it's not really the case anymore. And especially with the master portrait mode, it looks particularly nice. Like I would say, if you want a safe portrait mode option on the Shine Phone Ultra, just use master portraits. Of course, it won't really match the same level of consistency and quality that you can have from the X100 Pro, but I'd say it's gonna be good enough for most people, which again, was not the case before. Now moving on to the 3X, once again, very backlit situation. I mean, I, I just went no holds barred here because I wanted to see how these phones would perform under the most horrible and ridiculous lighting conditions. The X100 Pro, I knew it was gonna be good, but the Xiaomi keeping up as much as it has is just such a massive improvement, I can't even tell you. Now in this particular case, I actually think the master portrait mode looks a little too flat. And you know, this is like a small version of the massive inconsistency we used to have before. Like you saw right here, the 2X master mode was doing a slightly better job. And at 3X, now the Leica portraits were doing a better job. So essentially here, the problem still exists, but it is much more of a niche issue under very specific, very challenging lighting conditions that you're gonna have this kind of inconsistency between Leica portraits and master portraits on the Shine Ford and Ultra. Again, this was way, way worse back in the day. Now then for 5X. So 5X, you can't really use portrait mode on the Shine Ford and Ultra, as ridiculous as that sounds. This is a regular photograph. Now the quality of the sensor is so damn good. And with 5X inherently giving you a really nice crop and all that stuff, you do get some natural bokeh and blur in the background. But I don't know, it just, the fact that you don't really get a portrait mode even though you have optical zoom option at 5x on the Xiaomi it has always struck me as odd and it's always going to now finally let us check out night mode now you see the fact is simple the Xiaomi Ford and Ultra has possibly the best night mode that I've ever used personally because I prefer dark night mode shots night mode shots that look like they were taken at night and it's very obvious here that I prefer the Xiaomi Ford and Ultra once again yes I am using like authentic that is what gives you the really authentic looking night shots, as the name would indicate, I guess. But on the X100 Pro, you don't really have such an option. You are stuck 
with really brightened and really processed night mode shots. Sometimes that can be nice, I guess, you know, like in this case, you are getting more detail in the road and so on and so forth, but that night sky just looks horrendous. It's too damn blue. And it's the exact same situation right here. I mean, just look at the night sky. That doesn't even look like I took it at night. It looks like, you know, maybe late evening or something like that. Yes, I do like how much detail we have in the foreground with this particular shot. I think this was an ultra wide shot. And it's nice and all with the X100 Pro, but the look of the Shy Ford and Ultra, despite not having as much detail in the foreground, it just works for me. I don't know why it works, but it does. That's just the way I am. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna prefer the Shy Ford and Ultra. The only sad part about the X100 Pro, even to this day, is that it doesn't have a natural color profile for night mode. I mean, case in point right here. Like, yeah, sure, it looks almost stylish on the X100 Pro in this particular case with like the teal that we're getting. <laughs> That's, that's quite a sky right there. I mean, this is something you'd see in like a Michael Bay movie. But at the end of the day, the Shy Ford Ultra is gonna give you realistic looking night mode shots, which I think is of prime importance. Then of course, our classic, most challenging ultra wide shot that we can have, the tree in front of the sky, because usually if you have just the sky and a few buildings, it's easy enough for both. But as you can tell, the Shy Ford Ultra is particularly struggling here because it is very dark. And to pick out the details with the leaves whilst also making sure that we have a smooth, beautiful night sky. It's difficult. And this is where the robust processing of the X100 Pro really kicks in, because you can see it is preserving basically every little detail in the leaves, while the Xiaomi, as I said, struggling a lot. Now then, let's take a look at zoom. So zoom was actually quite problematic on the Shine Ford and Ultra at night, because for some odd reason, I constantly got a lot of motion blur, uh, an ungodly amount of motion blur. But... I believe it has been fixed. Now the shot itself, undeniably, it looks better on the X100 Pro. This is what you get from having really robust processing, as I mentioned before. Cropping in, however, yes, the X100 Pro has a little bit more detail. Well, at least it appears like it does. It's kind of, uh, I guess, artifacted. But the motion blur is not really causing any issues. There was a bit of wind action happening. You'll see it happen in a few other shots, but it seems like the motion blur problem is more or less gone on the Xiaomi. Then of course we have the 3X and once again I do think that the X100 in this particular case with this kind of lighting is just doing a better job in terms of handling contrast, the highlights, the white balance, everything is maintained perfectly. Not exactly the case on the Xiaomi which is unfortunate. Now cropping all the way in, obviously this is where you're gonna get a better result from the Xiaomi 4 Ultra in lieu of the simple fact that it has optical zoom. Then of course 5X and 4.3X on the X100 Pro. Well, this one's gonna be interesting because it is, of course, the same optical zoom, well, similar optical zoom that we have on both phones. Of course, cropping in, well, there's that motion blur problem that I was gonna talk about. Now, here's the thing. There was a lot of wind, so therefore, even the X100 Pro, which never has any issues with motion blur, is also having problems. So it's only natural that the Sham is also struggling here. Both of them had to take a long exposure after all. Amongst all that I've seen with the zoom at night, I don't think the motion blur problem exists outside of the fact that if you have wind, then yes, you're gonna have motion blur on both phones, on any smartphone, basically. So with that said, we are finally at the end of this comparison. Now, well, what I can tell you is this. The X100 Pro, it didn't really have any improvements or changes as such. The 4K60 Ultra Wide, that, that was just weird. I, I don't really know what to say in that regard. I, I still have no idea. But what I can tell you with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, on the other hand, is that there have been so many improvements, even small improvements like, you know, better contrast and exposure balance with like authentic when you're taking backlit shots or high contrast lighting situations, so on and so forth. It just, it works really well now. The overall consistency boost, the fact that 4K60 video now looks really good. The fact that 8K video had a stabilization update essentially. The fact that the portrait mode works. Like I, I can't tell you how much better I feel about talking about the Xiaomi 14 Ultra because every time I talked about it previously, it was always with this insane caveat that portrait mode is almost unusable. No more. It works. And it works exceptionally well now. Well, I don't know if it's exceptionally well. I guess I could say it is very usable and almost flagship-like quality. Not as good as the X100 Pro. Once again, the X100 Pro is still just one particular league ahead in terms of consistency. But... The Xiaomi's gotten close, like with all the pro features that it has on top of regular consistency updates that we have had, 
it's it's a strong contender for basically top three from my personal cameras this year. The Xander already has a spot, so two of them are taken. Now, if anything comes out that can top both of these phones, now that would be quite something. Or maybe even, you know, compete with them. Anyway, I'll see you guys tonight with maybe one more video. I'm not really sure. I'll see. Cheers.